In today's episode, we are going to take a look into the Viltrox 35mm f1.8 for Sony E-mount. And yes, this is a new release. And we are going to compare it to the Sony FA 35mm f1.8 that I'm using almost for more than a year now. And we should go straight on unboxing, spec talk with the Viltrox 35mm f1.8 and also compare it to 35mm. Also we have some outside shoot, photos and video with autofocus test and actually in the end understand this Viltrox lens is worth more with less money than the Sony 35mm. Looks like Viltrox is rounding up the lineup for a standard focal range. Yes, they have the 24mm for Sony autofocus 50mm for Sony autofocus and 85mm. And I have made the complete reviews of that lens in the description down below so you can check all the lenses out and understand if they are made for your production and if you are going for a cheaper variant from Viltrox and save some money. Also you can find the links in the description to get this lens right now. And yes, I have already used this lens to film something outside and checking out the focus, the tracking and all that matters with this lens and also a complete in-depth review for some filters completely using this lens. And they will be actually popping right now and also the b-roll is going on right now so you can check it out and it will be also linked in the description when the video goes out. Okay, so let's get firstly to an unboxing. The Viltrox 35mm f1.8 full frame Sony E-mount lens is shipped in this very generously designed box that protects very well the lens inside. Inside you'll find the lens, lens cap and sunshade, instruction manual, warranty card and soft pouch. The weight is 340 grams, making it slightly heavier than the Sony 281 grams. In real life conditions this isn't so much and it should be not a problem if you pack small and light. The Vitlox is also slightly bigger in size, I would say it around 15 to 20 percent. Let's get firstly to some specs and compare them to the Sony 35mm. They have bought an aperture of f1.8. The Viltrox is designed around 8 elements in 10 groups, with an ultra-light internal focusing system with the LED screw. The minimal actual focusing distance of the Viltrox is 40 cm, making it a little less near macro shooting option than the Sony 35mm f1.8. The build quality is great with a full metal body design and aperture selection. Yes, you can leave it in automatic and select the aperture via your camera or select it manually on the lens. Sometimes very useful because the aperture is declicked. Just like every Viltrox lens, on the back mount we'll find a USB-C upgrade port. So whenever a new firmware update gets out, you're able to update it directly via your computer. In the other hand, the Sony 35mm f1.8 has a dedicated AF-MF button on the side, but I really don't use it whatsoever. So yes, I went two days outside shooting photos of my colleague and myself for some banger BTS shots and actual banger thumbnails for the Tenos Pro and other filters and also I went out to test this lens in a ski, my favorite ski resort and actually test this lens for some photos of my son and my wife. From the autofocus experience I was having no problems on fast auto acquiring face and eye focus on my son running. The images looks really good with a great amount of contrast and good colors. The chromatic aberration isn't that pronounced and actually really good control in some kind of backlight situations. The actual bokeh balls that this lens produce are round and pleasant to the eye. As for the sharpness, the Viltrox 35mm is a bit softer than the 35mm overall. And yes, if you want sharper photos, well, go for the 35mm from Sony. If not, you will be more than fine with the Viltrox. And yes, I made also an autofocus test inside of this studio, actually testing between the Sony 35mm and the 35mm from Viltrox and understand how they quickly acquire focus and how the eye tracking focus works in this studio control environment and understand which one is more pleasant. In the autofocus test, the Sony A7 S3 was set at the most responsive settings transition speed 7 and subject sensitivity 5. I can say that the Viltrox 35mm does a pretty great job on acquiring focus and in the test shots made compared to Sony 35mm 
I wasn't actually able to decide which one is better. Maybe slightly more consistent was the Sony, but I would not put my hand on fire for that. The Viltrox exceeded my expectation in this field. Overall, this lens is a smart choice for everyone who wants to save some money, because you can almost pick the 35mm Viltrox and the 50mm Viltrox for the price of the 35mm Sony. Sometimes the 35mm Sony lens is discounted in various markets, but the base price of the Viltrox 35mm is always lower at around 20-30% globally depending on the market. Finally, yes, the Viltrox is a money saver bang for the buck option. I can fully recommend this lens. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I will be happy to answer all of them. Until my next one, thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe with the bearing icon to get notified every time I make a new video and see you on my next one.